Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. I started reading Joanne Harris's The Gospel of Loki yesterday. Now, it's a little bit different from the sagas. It's very clearly a modern story in style, but has some basis in the sagas. But what's particularly notable about it is that as you'd expect from something the viewpoint of Loki, it's very disrespectful of the Norse gods. It's very definitely not a religious story. And so, having read a lot of Norse sagas, I was struck by feeling that it didn't quite sit right. Which, given that Loki points out constantly that he likes to lie to people, was a good thing to feel. So that's well done. It is very definitely amusing. But it's an interesting juxtaposition. Just after I put it down, I read some newspaper articles about the Charlie Hebdo massacre. And I was struck by the fact that the Gospel of Loki and a number of other books Tom Holt's Valhalla, many of Tom Holt's other books, Asgard, the Thor movies of the last few years, all deviate from the sagas in ways that are relatively disrespectful to the Norse gods. They make Thor out to be pettier more stupid, less moral than some of the authentic original texts. And it struck me that you never see a Sartre preachers ranting about the insults to their faith. You never have as a true picketing movie theatres or bookshops about the blasphemies of these books. And viewed as a description of gods, the Gospel of Loki is easily as disrespectful as the Satanic Verses or The Last Temptation of Christ. And so, I sort of think, why is it that when we are discussing religion, we polarise ourselves on atheists rational, religious people screaming about blasphemy. And we're not just missing the middle ground of religions, the moderate Muslims, the ordinary everyday Protestants that David Cameron likes to talk about when avoiding the issue of whether religion should have primacy over secular law. But <clears throat> we're also moving the middle ground of religions that aren't ranty themselves. And there are people who ascribe to Norse pagan religions who are a little bit right-wing. I've met some of them, and not all of them share my political viewpoints. But there aren't frothing murderers who are on the news claiming they did it because they were protecting the honour of Odin. There aren't people blowing up bookshops or declaring fatwas against authors in the name of Freya. And so, whilst we might have different views on the legitimacy of religion at all in society, I think we're doing social cohesion an injustice by not recognising that Primarily, it's a subset of religions that are indulging in this. 
So when we talk about religion, we should make it clear whether we're talking about the religions that contain these people, which, whilst it's a generalisation, seem to be mostly Abrahamic, or whether we're talking about religion as the concept of belief in some more powerful being. And that potentially instead of arguing about whether religion is a bad thing, we should be looking at why some religions produce these fanatical antisocial people and why other religions tend not to. Why Norse paganism or Azatru, which is a religion that is strongly a warrior code, produces fewer people who are out to enforce their will on others than Christianity, a religion that seeks to exalt the meek, the non-violent. By that, <coughs> there is something about the psychology of permitted conflict that by saying these are the grounds to fight on, we are saying it is not acceptable to fight all the time. Whereas religions that go, you have to be perfect all the time, are not taking into account the fact that it is natural for lions to roar and people to occasionally act from emotion rather than pure logic. Bit of a fuzzy point at the moment, because it only really came to me this morning, but something to I'll be musing on and any thoughts people have in the comments. Toodaloo!